Namaste. I hope you are well, and I hope this live transmission finds you in great spirits. Sending my love and blessings from Mexico. As you can see, it's a really beautiful day here, really green, really gorgeous, and such a wonderful setting for me to be sharing this live transmission. So I'm just going to um, give uh, as a few moments just to allow other people to jump onto this um, live transmission and spend a few moments saying, hi, how are you? Hope you are all very, very well. Please, please, please let me know that you're here. Send me a comment. Um, leave a comment. Uh, let me know that you're here. I'm using a platform um, which if you're watching this on Facebook, sometimes it doesn't allow me to see your name, but I can see your comments. So please, 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 please share your comments and say hi, let me know you're here. Hi, Scotty, great to see you. Hi, Param, really, really wonderful to see you all and all of you on Facebook as well. Okay, I'm gonna get going. I'm gonna drive straight into the theme for today, which is creating stability. So I wanted to share this transmission, which is the fundamentals of creating stability, because at this time, I just feel that this is of utmost, utmost importance. So I've talked a lot over the last few months about this natural ascension process that we are going through, that our planet and that our solar system is going through. So if you wanna know more about that and more in depth about how this is affecting us as human beings on planet Earth, watch some of my old, um, my older videos that you'll find on Instagram or you'll find on Facebook if you're part of my group or you'll find on YouTube as well. But just to give an overview, as our solar system, our galaxy is moving into, into an area of the universe, actually moving towards the central sun, we are naturally coming into a higher vibrational frequency energetic part of the universe. And this is impacting us as energetic beings on our little tiny planet right here, right now. So we're at energy, everything is energy. And so when this high vibe energy comes in, it's literally moving through our systems and helping to sift the old, dense, stagnant energy, our fears, our challenges, our worries, all of this stuff that's sitting in our energy layers, that's sitting in our field, that's sitting in our emotional system, it's naturally bringing it up for us to see. So our challenges, imbalances, our fears, our traumas on an individual level, but on a collective level, this is happening massively. We are really going through it. You may have noticed yourself individually, going through challenges, um, your fears coming up, um, maybe imbalances that you're aware of. You may have noticed it with your friends, with your family members, with your communities even, and generally with the collective. I know some of you that I'm having conversations with are starting to recognize similarities and experiences that you're having with other people, but with also kind of the wider, the wider collective as well. So, In order to navigate these challenging times, in order to be able to really face ourselves, to, to sit with what's coming up, to experience it, for that to all to be okay and not to send us into confusion um, or fear or even paralysis, because it, this can it can feel really paralyzing, can't it, at times when you know, your deepest, darkest traumas are coming up or um, challenges that you're experiencing that have these memories um, of very old wounds. Maybe it's ancestral, maybe it's stuff that you experienced earlier on in your life. But some of this can be so challenging that it actually paralyzes us. We don't know how to move forward. So in order to really face all of that, we need to create a strong foundation within because actually we have everything that we need within us 
So for me, the fundamentals of creating stability start with three things. So we have stability itself, how to actually create. So there's the, the idea of being stable and grounded. We have willingness and trust. For me, these are the three main components. Groundedness, willingness, and trust are the three major components of creating stability. And we cannot find these things outside of us, okay? We can only find these things within us. So if you think that things are gonna improve if you get a better job, if you get a promotion, if um, you clear your workload, if you think things are gonna improve in your life when you meet someone, or if you do more therapy even, or do more work, do more personal development work, if you believe that things are gonna improve for you once you've achieved all of those things, I invite you to tune into where that's coming from and what's driving that. Because if it's lack or fear that's driving that, then you or we, we're all, you know, this is something that we all experience, but if it's fear or lack that this is coming from, then we are gonna be operating from this conditioned identity that we have created for ourselves. So the parts of us, the parts of our minds and our body have created a world for us, have created masks and have created these whole personalities from which we react, which we engage with the world. And this is really a way that we protect ourselves. The parts of us protect us from the world. But what happens is that that mask or that facade that we engage, that we interface with the world with, isn't the true essence of who we really, really are. And it's operating from that place of fear and lack and uncertainty. So when we shift into recognizing our soul journey, our mission on earth, our vision for our time here on earth, our, our vision for humanity, when we start to shift into this more self-led view and understanding and experience of what we're here to do, we start to drop into our self energy, we really can start to feel that and, and see and experience those, that subtle difference between what I desire from my soul and what I desire from my mind, from my body. It's, there's, you can, we can start to differentiate and see that some of my desires are coming from a place of um, fear, perhaps, or wanting to protect myself or remembering lack from the past, from the ancestral line. And that's still relevant and beautiful in its own way, and also important to hold lightly alongside what I also feel and know my soul desires, my soul journey, and the vision that I see from soul and what that is, and to hold both of those lightly because once we recognize ourselves as soul, and once we recognize the parts in our mind and body and we see, we see both of this sitting side by side, not forsaking one for the other, not recognizing that what my mind wants isn't, you know, isn't valid because it's just my mind and my soul is, you know, the thing. We hold both of both aspects of ourselves lightly and together because that makes us whole. This sense of oneness, of being united in our being is to recognize and knowledge, acknowledge and appreciate all of what we are. So our mind and our body and the desires of the mind and the body and soul and the desires of the soul and holding these both together. And from that point, 
being sovereign in our decisions of how we then react and how we experience life and the choices and the decisions that we make moving forward. Okay. Now, one of the things that I have noticed that I invite you to start being a little bit more vigilant about is that when we're really blended with our lack and fear consciousness and when we are making decisions and we're like moving around and navigating this world, but from a place of fear and lack, there are teachers and programs and all sorts of structures out there that are preying on this, okay? And, and so just be vigilant and be aware of what you're maybe searching for or seeking that may be in being present with yourself and recognizing all of what you are and what you desire, perhaps there is a more helpful way for you to approach your own evolution and your own personal development. Because just going back to this idea of my things will improve for me when I do more healing, when I do more, when I do that course, when I, you know, complete that program, when I find a teacher that's going to show me how to do this. When we are stuck in that pattern, it's our fear and our lack that's driving that belief that when I'm more knowledgeable or done more healing or been on another course, I will be in a better position, okay? What my invitation is, is for you to tune into that and ask yourself, what is driving my desire, my need to do more healing, to jump on another course? And if that's coming from this grounded, place of knowing that that is in your path and that is the relevant thing, the most favorable thing for you right now on your timeline, then that's really beautiful. But if you recognize that there is some fear and lack there that's driving that, then that's something to take notice of, okay? My teacher Anand Mehrotra recently said in his new book, Liberation, which is uh, his interpretation of the Isha Upanishad, one of the Vedic texts, he says that it's the final frontier when the soul recognizes itself. So this whole idea that we've been fed in the kind of spiritual industry, shall we say, that we have to look a certain way, dress a certain way, attend certain trainings, this, this sense that we've acquired, that we have generated, we have bought into that, we've created that identity within ourselves, that that is something that exists out there that potentially seeks to take us away and separate us from ourself. Because when we recognize ourselves as soul, that's it, we've done it. We've done it. There's no more hoops we need to jump through. There's no more training we need to do. There's nothing, no more that we need to do. Everything else is a bonus. It's a bonus. If you decide to go into yoga teacher training courses because you know deep down that that's going to help you and that's a part of your path. It's a bonus. Everything that you need is already within you. The only thing that maybe is kind of missing it's just a bit of guidance to remember how to access it. That's it. So stability or groundedness, sorry, groundedness, willingness, and trust, the three major components, the fundamentals of creating stability, okay? So when we work on these three aspects, what we do is we increase or raise our deserving power, our deserving power. And this transforms our self-worth, our sense of our worthiness, and completely transforms our confidence, confidence in ourself, and also our sense of personal power, our sovereignty, 
our ability to affect and influence change in our world, in the world, in the universe. Okay. So I'm going to break each one down briefly to share with you what I mean about groundedness, trust, and stability. I'm getting some really beautiful comments. I'm just going to pause here and just see if there's any um, questions. Gosh, it's very, uh, let's see. Scotty sending some lovely messages. Oh, Dakini, amazing. Sonia, it's so good to see you guys. So Scotty says, interesting. I've actually been looking at doing a Reiki course for a while. So this is good food for thought. Amazing. Oh, Scotty. Well, Rupa and I are here for you if you ever want to talk about that and just to um, help guide you in that direction. Wonderful. Okay, let's see on Facebook. Groundedness, willingness, and trust. I might add compassion into my mix. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Great. Okay, so I'm just going to get into um, breaking these three elements down a little bit for you. So let's start with groundedness. Okay, so groundedness um, and stability. So the stability is the kind of the, the theme of today. And groundedness is, is very much is kind of like another way it's another way of um, talking about stability from a, like an energetic perspective, okay? So when I'm talking about groundedness, I'm talking about our embodiment of our root energy, our muladhara, okay? So the root is at the base of the spine, and this is, you know, the, the, the seat of our kundalini energy. It rises through the root, and, and this kundalini energy rises up our system and activates our upper um, energetic system, but it rises from the base of the spine up through the sacral, the swadhisthana, and up to the manipura or the solar plexus. So these are the lower triangle chakras. So this energy rises up through, it unlocks and unblocks the lower chakras and then activates the upper chakras. So the heart, the anahata, the throat, the vishuddha, third eye, agya, and the sesrara, which is the crown, these are the activation chakras. So in order to get this energy flowing up and through the system that's going to nourish and sustain our whole being, we've got to unlock and unblock these energies that are at the base, at the bottom, at this lower triangle of our system. So the root is associated with our fears. It's where at the energy of our fears sits okay, within our system. And then the, the sacral chakra, which is the second chakra up, is where our trauma and ancestral trauma sits and the energy of that. And then up at the Manipura is where our more day-to-day -day stress, anxiety, worry, that kind of day-to-day -day stagnant energy sits in this particular area. So as we cultivate energy in the lower triangle, we actively work with our kundalini energy with certain practices we're bringing that energy up that's unlocking those bottom three chakras and then it's then moving upwards into the anahata and above and that's activating these chakras so these energy centers are activating our being in various different ways okay so we have our heart center we have our compassion our courage and all of those beautiful heart, heart led qualities we have our throat our expression our also a sense of, of of being received and being heard um we have the third eye the seat of our intuition we have our crown crown our connection to to the cosmos and the other realms so this um the sense of groundedness begins right down at the root and if we want to work with this whole system, we've got to anchor in at the root. Because if we don't anchor in at the root, then we're going to be really wobbly up here. And I meet people often who maybe haven't been guided with the correct information. And they're doing a lot of this like very astral, very third eye, crown, light work. Uh, but, but without the groundedness and the stability at the root, anchoring them in. And this can then become very wobbly and we can actually become fragmented because the body and the mind has got to move along with us on our spiritual development. Okay, that's really, really key to all of this. If we are just constant, constantly activating these upper chakras, but the mind and the body is like not really getting it, 
then this is where fragmentation, this is where um, all sorts of kind of issues and imbalances can start to happen. And we can even start to really um, create this relationship of distrust between the parts of the mind and the body and soul energy. So we have to be really, really careful with that. So we want to create this groundedness to anchor in with the root, okay? Now, willingness. Willingness is all to do with the solar plexus. It's all to do with our commitment, our determination. It's all to do with our motivation. So when we exercise the solar plexus, our inner sun, what we're doing is we're powering up this commitment, this discipline, which is really, really important because as we do our personal development work, as we are facing ourselves with the challenges that are coming up, if we can exercise our willingness and our commitment and, and keep that high, then we will feel able and willing to face ourselves, to do the work, to do what needs to, to happen, to sit and practice when we need to sit and practice, to seek help, to ask for help, to do all of those things that are going to help us along our journey to um, to face our challenges. That, that willingness, cultivating that willingness is so super important. In the yogic tradition, it's like, you know, the first thing that we learn to do really pretty much um, that my teacher taught me it's like you work on the willingness first you, you work on the solar plexus because that's going to drive and fuel everything it also is going to um ignite our fire our fire in our digestion in our um really fundamental central pranic channel that's going to feed the whole system okay again helping us to show up to ourselves show up to the world with courage so um so yeah, that's willingness. So the final, the final aspect, final fundamental aspect of creating stability is trust. Okay, so trust. So somebody left in the um, comments on Facebook, this idea of compassion that you would add compassion into your mix. And that is absolutely where I would bring in compassion is in this sense of trust. Okay, so what do I mean by trust? So what do I mean is like soul energy, who the true essence of who we are, does not distrust. So when we have that sense or that thought of, I don't know who to trust, or I don't know what to trust, um, that is coming from a part of us, a part of our mind, a part of our body. Okay, And if this is a familiar, a familiar if this is a new concept to you, um, I have so many resources and videos are about internal family systems, which is this model um, that I work with, the psychotherapy model, which is amazing at understanding and explaining all of the different parts in our system that make us whole. So the parts of our mind and our body are like these identities and these personalities that have been created to help guide and protect us in the world. And that is different from our soul energy, as I mentioned before. So that part of us that doesn't trust is a part of us but often we might not realize or we might realize we might be starting to tune into that that we may have parts in our system that are distrusting of our own self energy so when you have this sense that like oh i want to i want to get into this modality of healing or i want to have a session you know a psychotherapy session or i want to do something but you have this sense of i don't know if i can trust it I don't know if I can trust that person. That's a part that's holding that as a protection mechanism to prevent us from going deeper into that thing. And it's not bad, it's not wrong, it's just a way that we work. It's a way that the parts of us work to protect us and to guide us. So in this journey, what we can do is we can teach the parts of our mind and body how to trust us, again. And this is a really crucial and fundamental part to creating stability and to going on from that and doing our personal development work. Because the more and more our parts can get on board and trust self and soul energy, the more and more we are mastering ourselves. And that's what self-mastery to me is. It's that journey of becoming whole again through acknowledging and recognizing that the parts of our mind and body need that attention, have those beliefs, and are not bad or wrong, that those are parts of me. 
And so rather than suppressing that anger or suppressing that idea, that uncomfortability, I'm going to bring it into my consciousness. I'm going to acknowledge it and give it the time and the space and dialogue with that part of me that holds that belief or has that feeling. And in doing that, creating this inner dialogue, this relationship with myself that I've never, ever had before is going to create a level of trust between mind, body and self energy that is like unprecedented for you. And that is how you are going to master yourself, master your world and become the driver of your reality. So this is the path of self mastery. This is what I'm really super passionate about is supporting people in their path of self mastery. Um, Scotty, I literally use three stretches at the start of most training sessions that focus on expanding the solar plexus. Well, this is, we ha again, we have this intuitive innate knowledge, like, you know, this, that you are this, this pool, this tower, this beacon of wisdom and light. And what I love about you, Scotty, is that you just show up to your community, just like, just show up, you know, just so humbly. And you just have all this beautiful wisdom within you, as we all do. And you're just channeling that with full trust. And I think that's so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay, so moving on to the final part of my transmission. We are going to naturally start to react, experience life, and express from our soul and self energy rather than from our conditioned identity that our parts have created for us to hide and protect ourselves from the world. So all of this is gonna happen as we address those three things, our groundedness, our willingness, and our trust. And by the way, this whole global pandemic that we find ourselves in absolutely is a manifestation of our collective consciousness. We have created this together. And it is a reflection of our deeply, deeply entrenched fears, trauma, stress, anxiety, and insecurity. So all of this had to come up in this way for us to see it and be faced with it in order to do something about it. So this is not like the government doing something to us. This isn't like some weird conspiracy theory. This is something we have all created. And this is how twisted and weird it has got. We have to take responsibility for that because we are each creators in this universe. That is what we are here to do. We are creative beings. Human soul technology is to be creators. Okay, so how do we work on cultivating these fundamental aspects of uh, stability? So first, groundedness. We develop the lower triangle chakra energy work using the broader principles, uh, techniques of Tantra, of um, yogic technologies, of energy medicine technologies, uh, working with nature, working with the elements. We utilize those technologies to work on unlocking and unblocking the lower chakras so that we can activate the upper. We create the stability in the lower triangle, okay? The groundedness from the root. How we activate um, our willingness, that's the second one, is through daily ritual. So if we create this regular routine aspect of our being where we have a ritual or a routine that brings us to ourselves every day to have this time to have this space to tune in with no matter what that ritual or what that routine is going to be for you it might be sitting and drinking a cup of tea in the morning it might be doing an actual morning ritual where you light a candle and you write, light some incense, you do a little mini puja, you might actually have practice or you might go for a walk, or you might watch the sunset, whatever it is, creating that time for yourself and tuning inwards is going to help you develop and maintain that commitment to yourself, okay? There are also other um, energy work 
uh, techniques that you can use to also fire up your solar plexus. But that, you know, is also could be included in the work, the groundedness work that you do, which is the lower triangle work that I mentioned before. You work on the root, the sacral and the Manipura, then you're working on your willingness and your groundedness as well. And the third thing that you can do, and this particularly um, around building that trust, is to simply do the work in the moment. So when you feel yourself being triggered, you observe a pattern coming up, a part coming up, some thought, something you, you notice. So your self energy is noticed, observe that trigger. Then take that moment rather than pushing it away because it feels uncomfortable to have seen that about yourself. Actually, just bring it into your consciousness and sit with it. Tell yourself it's okay. Acknowledge that trigger. Acknowledge that thought. Eat, no matter what it, no matter how uncomfortable it feels, no matter how, what that thought was, you might be thinking that tempted to go and blend with that that criticism part, that criticizing part that comes in and says, "Oh my God, that was an awful thing to say. I can't believe you thought that." Resisting the temptation to, to blend with that part and just sit with it from your self energy and just see it no matter what it was and say, it's okay, I see you there and I acknowledge it and it's okay. The more that we just sit and acknowledge what's coming up, the more we're going to build trust in the system because then that part of us that's having that thought or that's triggered actually starts to trust us, self. And eventually it's going to start to hand more and more and more of that power over to self energy and self energy is going to take more and more and more of a dominant position in our being. Okay. So we will react more from our self energy rather than from the part. So we might still see the part coming or we might still feel the trigger. This trigger will still be there. The anger will still come up, but we may not act from that anger anymore. We not, may not be that anger. We might see it there and be like, okay, I feel that anger in my body. It's okay. I'm not going to push it away. I acknowledge you. And then it will just kind of dissipate and you'll be able to continue going about your day-to-day -day business, observing and seeing that and learning from that. Okay. So doing the work in the moment to acknowledge is going to be what comes up is going to be the way that we build a greater sense of trust in our system. And of course, there are lots and lots of other techniques, some of which I'm going to be sharing with you over the next couple of weeks as we continue to ride through this theme of creating stability. Um, Roop and I, so Roop is Reiki Roop on Instagram, will be sharing an IG Live next Friday where we will be having a conversation about this topic. I've already shared a 15 minute um, stabilizing and soothing breath and Kriya set on my YouTube, on Facebook, and on Instagram. So be sure to check that out and just stay tuned. I would love, love, love to hear from you. Please drop me a comment and let me know if this resonated and what bits resonated and um, just let, let me know how you're doing. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you that tuned in. Uh, sending you all my love and blessings of abundance. It's so wonderful to connect with you all. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.